Hi guys, welcome to Next Step with Cherry. Today we have a wonderful, beautiful person in our, on our channel today, and we are going to explore the new visa pathway in Canada. I'm telling you guys, forget about visitors visa for now. Let us focus on this visa because it has a lot of information around this, and I believe that it will benefit you. So what other pathway? We know that Canada have one million pathways to move to Canada, yeah. but we are going to Focus on this particular one and our sister is here to give us the guideline everything about that but before then guys please remember to share this video and also follow her youtube channel she also have a youtube channel i'm going to keep the link in the video description everything about canada so without wasting time let us uh, hand over to her so that she can introduce herself and we will kick off to what we have hello Samara. it's so nice to finally have you here please can you introduce yourself to us yeah, thank you very much, Cherry, for having me. Hi, everyone. My name is Summer. Uh, on social media, you know me as the Summer, you know, uh, because I just feel like I'm the only Summer that you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm currently doing my PhD in Canada. I came to Canada to do my master's, and I'm currently doing my PhD, and I did all of that for free. Like, I had fully funded scholarships to do my master's, and I'm currently doing my PhD for free as well. Um, so today we'll be talking about the particular route that is really getting everyone talking. Yeah, over to you, Cherry. Wow, wow, guys, you can hear that she actually is doing her PhD in Canada for free. That will be a topic of another day because she need to tell us how we can go about this, how we can get this scholarship. So if you want, to, if you want her to tell us about this information, please keep it on the comment section so that I will invite her and then she will also explain to us everything we need to know about getting scholarship in Canada. So without wasting time, please, can you tell us about this new visa pathway? What is this visa all about? Like, give us some information. Who can apply for this visa? How does it work? Like, give us a little bit of information about this visa yeah sure absolutely so it's called the digital nomad visa i mean by the word digital that should tell you that they are looking for people who are into remote jobs this pathway is for you and the beautiful thing about this is it looks like it's like visitors visa but it's not right mm. because this visa allows you to come to canada and work remotely for six months Unlike visitor's visa that you can't work in Canada except to switch that vis uh, visitor's visa to either a work permit or a study permit, which, you know, if you're looking for a work permit with a visitor's visa, mm -mm, that's yeah. really hard. So this nomad visa is just giving you an edge over visitor's visa. So you're coming in, you're working from home. There is no, like, expectation that, oh, you're breaking the law, you're not, you're not meant to work you are allowed to work. I mean, this was announced a um, few months ago, but then three days or four days ago, the same announcement, I'm like, okay, this is this is reality. Like, it's real. Mm -hmm. It's not like one of those pla um, pathways or platforms where they just state out information and then there is no steps as to how you can mm -hmm. do it. Right, so this Nomad Visa is just looking for people who are into tech. Basically, they can work from home. They are looking for you. And the reason mm -hmm. is, because Canada is looking for ways to expand, you know, the number of lands that we have. It's a, mm. it's massive that they're looking for people. Okay, they'll keep telling you over oh, looking for over five. Like, let's say I think last time they said they were looking for three hundred or seven. This is mm -hmm. the, Every year they're looking for a certain number of people, and they keep bringing in people. So now some people will say, "How do I qualify for this?" right you see some people maybe you are into data analysis or you're a project manager the thing is that some people don't even know that they're project managers with like how will i put this so that people understand i mean yes if you have pmp that's the certification for project manager that's good but then there are some goals that you partake online that doesn't require you to be at the office okay and let's even say that you're currently working in the office and then this office can you know allow you to you know go to a particular country to work from home it doesn't affect the you know output of this job right that means you qualify right so there's so many you know other pathways that we can categorize as you know digital nomads now another thing someone can say is oh what if i'm into um someone can say oh what if i'm into let's say i'm a virtual assistant right do i qualify as a digital nomad now it depends on your job description it doesn't just end as being a virtual assistant what do you do okay what do you do 
in that part okay so you want to be able to express yourself and you want to be able to make sure that if the visa official is looking at that okay they are like okay that's that's true this person is a digital number now the thing now is everybody will want to jump on this and that's the that's the that's the funny thing you should only jump on it if you are a digital nomad if you work remotely if you can work remotely and if you're into like tech you know your job requires you to work online okay so if for instance i'm a research assistant but i travel the world and i work online i can jump into that and say oh yeah i research i do everything remotely and i am going to be able to partake in this if you can show proof there are a lot of things that we're going to talk about that can show that okay you actually have this job okay so that you don't because everybody would want to jump into this offer but remember, IRCC, they are way smarter than we can imagine. They will be able to tell who is lying and who yeah. is not, right? So, yeah, that's just in a nutshell what digital nomads um, are all about. Okay, so uh, let me uh, let me get this. Uh, what if I am a marketer or maybe I am uh, human resources? I'm working for a particular company. I'm not going to the office. I'm working from home. Do I qualify for that if I am not a tech person, but I do any job, but the job requires me to work from home? Does that also count? No, into in, as, in as much as IRCC has not like given us a mm. rundown of exactly who they are looking for. They're just a mm. digital nomads, okay? So mm. if, in my own opinion, I would say, if you're working from home, then you can jump on that. There are people yeah. that are freelancers, okay? They work for some companies in the US. Those are, those are digital mm. nomads, in my own opinion, okay? Mm. So that's why we are with, the, I mean, IRS is, oh, we're going to let you people know by the end of the month. Mm. Sorry, by the end of the year, that is by December, they will, now give us a full information on okay. the categories of people in this. But now the thing is, that is not even stopping you from putting an application. Mm. Because I was having some conversations with licensed immigration consultants when we were just generally just discussing about this. And then they were giving us insights on how people can start partaking in this program. Wow. Wow. Okay, so uh, going through this digital nomad pathway as well, do I, does it mean that uh, what if after the six months elapses, what is going to happen? Do I need to go that back? To, yeah. does I, uh, no, that's it. Oh, no, that's the beautiful thing about it. So Canada is saying you are allowed to work six months remotely as a digital nomad, okay? But then you have the opportunity to get a job with any company. And remember, companies are looking for digital nomads. Companies mm -hmm. are looking techies okay so you want to jump on that as you're coming into the country in as much as you're working remotely with your company wherever they are please try to look for a job and they're not saying that they have to be lmia so that's the good thing because if it's lmia i would have told you run because lmia is not an easy work exactly so he, they're not asking you to get an lmia job no Wow. Why well, I feel like by December, what they'll be telling us are not even the categories. They'll be telling us that you have the opportunity to switch from um, normal visa to MPR or mm -hmm. what I mean, because that's the pathway that they're trying to open now. They are not looking for, oh, you after you finish working for six months, you go back. No. You apply for a job, you get a job, and you now either convert it to work permit or PR. By December, we would know how people can transition to PR. Work permit is pretty easy. We want to know how they can transition with their normal visa to PR. Mm -hmm. So all that information will be, you know, you know, out in the open by December. But for now, you can come into Canada as a normal visa, work for six months without any wahala. Unlike um, in um, visa country. Also, the visitors visa yeah. cousin Spain. I think it's Spain and Portugal. We also have the digital nomad visa, but it has that but to switch it over to another mm -hmm. visa. That is where the problem is. So when you say that we can switch it, guys, I think this is the most amazing visa because it's. I mean, it's quite. It has a huge difference with visitors visa. You don't really need to have a job in Canada if you have a it's job anywhere, 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 anywhere. Just coming to Canada. The only thing is that. After that six months, you ought to have gotten a job with a Canadian company. Mm, okay. LMI. With, that is the, not LMI. That's the beautiful thing about it. Wow. Because LMIA wow. 
is a lot of work. Mm. People in Canada are still looking for LMIA, let alone someone come, ah, whoa. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, that is that is really really nice. Uh, I would like to also know uh, if you if you are to advise people that want to uh, think about either going with visitors visa, maybe find work, or going with digital nomad visa. What do you think are the disadvantage and the advantage of these two visas? Like comparing these two visas from your opinion and experience. Um, so I'm just going to be honest. I feel like any pathway you want to take, you need to plan. Most of us don't plan. We start to plan when we've entered the country. That's the wrong move. You want to start planning when you are not even in the country. So if you know you want to come in through the nomad visa, and in my own opinion, I would say if you know that you do not qualify for the digital nomad visa, don't bother taking it because it's mm. going to mess you up and you don't want something to mess you up. Okay? You want to try and come through a pathway that it will not be hard for you. If it's visitor's visa that you want to come in, into the country, the question now is, what are you coming into the country to do, right? Are you coming for a conference? There are some people that is when they come into the border that they would now give them and say, oh, you are meant to leave this country by so, 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 and so time. So you don't want to gamble with your life. You don't want to spend all that money only to get to the border and then they're telling you that, oh, with a visitor's visa, you cannot stay, even though they gave you multiple entry. So these are the issues. In my own opinion, this visa is very tricky. It's very, in as much as I tell people, come into this country as a visitor and switch immediately. But the best way to switch is to switch as a student and not mm. even to because it's hard, mm. right? Literally very hard. But if you're telling me that you want to come into this country through conference, hmm, that means low-key, you have gotten your admission. Mm. I see it now. You've gotten your admission and you're coming into the country to now apply for study permits. Don't gamble. That's my problem. We need to plan. Always have a plan. What's your plan? A to C, D, E, F. If A doesn't work, what are you going to do? You have to go to the next plan. If B doesn't work, you have to go to the next plan. Because I feel like when we don't check out all these things, we make mistakes. So in my own opinion, it's about your plan and where you where you see yourself in the next three years. Mm. Now, I mean, everybody says, oh, I want to get PR. But if you come into the country and you're not able to get what you want within the first one month or two that you arrived, what are you going to do? You can't even fold your arms. So in my own opinion, right now, the nomad visa is better because it affords you the opportunity to start working as soon as you enter the country. But if you're a visitor, you're not allowed to work until you get a job, an mm -hmm. LMIA job for that matter. Or you stop, you're, you're, you get a study permit. I remember, even if you get a study permit and all of that today, if your school is starting next year, May, you can't work until, May, until school starts. So you're like in a fix. You are just going to be spending money, and that's not what we want. You need to be able to enjoy the Canadian dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, guys, you guys have heard all this information. She's going to be updating the information when the uh, IRCC announces that uh, around December. So, you do well to follow her channel so that she will give you a live update or update about this visa, who is qualified, and every other thing that you need to know. But at least you have it at the back of your head that there is a visa like this, and these are the people that can apply. Then you can start working towards it. Even if you don't apply by December, at least by next year, before December, you might also be lucky to apply through this uh, route. So guys, with that, we come to the end of this video. Please do well to follow some on our YouTube video, on our YouTube channel. I will keep the link in the video description below the title so that you can uh, reach out to her if you want to move to Canada. So she shares information about Canada, every pathway about Canada, PR, anything you need to know about Canada. So please go do well to follow her on our YouTube channel and also Twitter page as well. We are hoping to see you next time. So you will tell us about this scholarship. How we can apply sure. for this. So see you guys on my next video. Bye. Bye, guys. Okay. The worst part is that my power button